Many people say that if you want to find yourself, you should go to India. But I say you should go to Catalonia, to Barcelona, Spain. And in this video, we will be going on the treasure hunt across the most beautiful spots in Barcelona to answer one key question. Who are you and what is your personality type? And to answer that question, I've hidden 10 clues across Barcelona. And the first clue was hidden inside the fruit basket of this sweet little angel. Look how friendly and cute he looks. I'll be taking that. So what does it say? Well, take a personality test. Now the truth is you can reason all around yourself back and forth about whether you're more this or more that, but a personality test has the potential to give you an accurate indicator of how you really think and how you really feel. I recommend the 16 personalities test, which was developed in close inspiration with the Big Five model, which is trusted by scientists across the world. And ideally you take the personality test with a trained psychologist or counselor, but if you can't get that, Consider taking it with a friend or family member, or somebody that knows you. And what's more important is save your results and pay attention if you had any strong or significant results. Did you score very high on certain dimensions and which and why? And did you find yourself more in the middle on some dimensions? A personality test can already reveal to you if there are certain things which are particularly strong in you, and if there are certain things about you that need more investigation and exploration. I also recommend taking a personality test multiple times across a year so that you can see how your results change and evolve over time and so that you can see if you have any certain things that tend to stay the same and if you have certain things that tend to change depending on what mood or what situation you're in. Our second clue is actually hidden inside La Sagrada Familia so to find out I'm gonna have to go inside. So, I don't believe you're allowed to film inside La Sagrada Familia, but I was able to find clue number two, which is ask your friends. Oh, ask your friends, loved ones, family members, people you trust, people you feel comfortable with, people you feel that uh, know you and uh, know who you are, what kind of personality you have. And show them your personality test results. Show them and uh, ask them if they think these results are accurate. Perhaps take the test with them and uh, see if they'd agree with your answers and how you describe yourself. Often you'll find that people have surprising views about you. Not always the correct ones, but they always have important feedback about how you present yourself and how you tend to come across to them. And the question for you to figure out is, am I being able to show them my real self or am I showing them a part of my persona just for them? That's gotta be him, right? I found him. But where is the note? Who is this guy anyways? Uyaume Garriga y Miguel. Uh. Secretary de la Junta Revolucionaria. So he's the secretary of the revolution. Why wasn't I invited? Oh, I see something there. That's gotta be it. Learn about the personality traits. Right. <laughs> I think the number one mistake people make when trying to learn about the different personality traits is that you want to identify only with one of them, right? So you read about introversion and extroversion and then you end up feeling like, well, I do both, right? And you try to only fit yourself in one, but that's not the goal of it, right? The goal is to see in what situations am I introverted and in what situations do I tend to be more extroverted? In what ways do I tend to be more introverted? And in which ways do I tend to be more extroverted? Rather than assuming that you'll always be introverted in every single situation, why not consider and look at and study when and how and what mood you tend to be in when you are more introverted compared to when you are more extroverted? That should help you also understand and see more nuance and how your personality shows up and in what situations your, your personality is going to show up in a certain way. The next clue is hidden at Barceloneta Beach. Let's go. Let's 
so I made it to the beach and it's actually quite windy as you can tell clue number four discovered subtypes now for this part of the video I recommend you put on some sunglasses if you're not already familiar with my system and approach I tend to work with four key subtypes I work with the subtype that is more assertive and dominant in their behavior and actions and a subtype that's more modest and often a lot of people think they're introverted because they are more modest so they say oh, I'm an introvert because I like to let other people take charge in groups and I don't need a lot of attention to myself and I don't need to win I can just go with the flow of the group but uh, actually you can be a modest or more shy style of extrovert and that's completely normal and even a healthy and positive thing to be depending on who you are you can also be a more playful variation of a personality type and the playful types they are more intrinsically motivated they act on their instincts and on their feelings and on their gut while the industrious and more serious subtypes are known to be more detached from their own impulses and instincts which means that they are going to act a little bit more uh, critically and they're going to be more responsibility, duty and structure oriented. Industrious types are known to be quite hardworking while playful subtypes are known to be very recreational, very fun loving and very energetic and positive types. By knowing your subtype, it's a lot easier for you to tell what personality type you have because you'll be looking at them. You'll see more nuances in your behavior and how you act. And you'll notice that, hey, a lot of the things that you thought were because you were a perceiving type were actually because you were more of a playful type. And so, <laughs> it's very important to consider your personality in the context of your subtype and your general temperament. So what does that mean? Well, first and foremost, if you want to understand your personality traits, you study your behavior. And if you want to understand your thinking, you study your thoughts, right? And that means, what are some common beliefs I tend to have about the world? For example, famous philosopher Plato believed that there was an intuitive world inside his own head, a world which was far more profound and more real and more authentic than anything that we see in the real outside world. And this is a distinctive common belief among introverted intuitive types. And extroverted intuitives tend to look at the outside world as a place of magic and mystery and puzzles and hidden patterns to be figured out and understood. And so you can study how conscious you are of a function, which means how often you tend to think this way and how frequently and how intensely you tend to engage in this level of thinking. And secondarily, you can study your relationship to these thoughts. Do you tend to think that these ideas are positive and good or do you tend to look at them in a negative light? For example, the introverted intuitive tends to look at the unknown and the mysterious and the theoretical as something positive while the extroverted sensing type tends to look at the unknown and the future and the mysterious as something dangerous and more scary. Now it's important to note that your preferences for each of these functions can change over time and that your thinking will develop and that you will learn from each new experience that you have. But if you understand how you think and what your thinking looks like, you can also start to understand better your own behavior and why you act the way you do in different situations and why you feel the same way you do about certain activities. So study the cognitive functions because that means you're going to learn more about yourself and your own thoughts. Clue number four was uh, located at the Barcelona Cathedral and it's learn the four situations. It's very important to remember that your personality is going to show up differently depending on if you're in a personal, private, social, recreational or professional setting. And that means that, for example, if you're at work, you might act differently than if you are engaged with a hobby or something that you find fun, but with no specific or concrete or tangible goal in mind, right? So it's very important to link and study 
how you act in these four different settings. And so, first of all, what you want to consider is how do you show up in your private life? To what extent do you express your personality when you're by yourself or in one-on-one -on -one settings or with people that you trust and feel quite and fairly comfortable around, right? Secondly, you might want to consider how you show up in social settings. And that means in larger groups and around people that you might like, you might enjoy, but perhaps don't fully trust yet and truly feel comfortable around yet. The truth is our personality will change depending on who we're with and depending on the vibe of the group and what's happening around us. To much of an extent, social settings alter our personality and how we tend to act. And so often, if you want to understand yourself, it's very important to consider yourself and study yourself based on how you tend to show up in private settings compared to social settings. The truth is in social settings, you might take on a specific role. In your family, you might have developed to take a certain character and certain characteristics just to fill that role in the social group and to provide a service for those people, right? But that might not be representative of who you are. You can also study people based on how they show up in professional settings compared to recreational settings. And that means what do you do and how do you act when you're in a professional setting or at work? How do you tend to be and how do your coworkers tend to perceive you, for example, compared to what do you tend to do for fun? What do you do just for the sake of it? Just because you enjoy it? Just because it's to kill time? Because it feels good. <laughs> Not with any specific reward in mind, right? Because when we're in a professional setting, we often market ourselves. We adjust our personality. We focus on what we can provide and what's valuable, what we can get paid for doing, right? And that might, sure, allow you to express a part of you and certain aspects of you, but it might not allow you to express every part of you. A, long, a common reason why people get very confused about their personality is because they get confused between all these different settings. Yes, okay, in private settings I'm like this, but in social settings I tend to act like, like that. And at work I tend to be this kind of a person, but when I'm out with my friends doing something fun, yeah, I can be quite different. So it's important to remember that and to focus on, first of all, how do you show up in private, activities around people who you trust and in fun activities doing things that you enjoy. Good morning viewers. Today we're going to be climbing up this. I don't know what it is. I'm not a planner. Let's just find out when we get there. By the way, I found this cool note here by the fountain. Study the four moods. So how does studying your mood help track your personality? Well, first of all, you might have noticed that you are sometimes more happy and sometimes more sad and sometimes more angry and sometimes more anxious and sometimes more stressed, right? But have you ever thought about the influence of these emotions and these states on your personality? The ancient Greeks talked about four different temperaments, choleric, sanguine, melancholic, phlegmatic, and in some ways, these were representatives of four key moods that we tend to switch between. And they also discussed how our personality can shift due to these mood swings and states. So what I've found is that when people are in a happy state, a sanguine state, when people are positive, when people are energetic, engaged, motivated, relaxed and confident about themselves, they show more of their dominant personality traits to the outer world. On the other hand, when people are more stressed, anxious, tired, drained, and uncomfortable, people tend to default to their opposite personality traits. These are supposed to be safeguards to protect you from not letting your flow and passion lead you down a ravine, you know. They're meant to protect you from negative situations and to help you manage difficulty. But they are not indicative of your core personality type. And your core personality type is who you are when you are in a positive state of mind. So study your personality based on who you are when you're in a positive mental frame rather than in a negative mental frame. And make a note when you take personality tests about how you're feeling. Because the truth is you might respond differently if you're in a bad state compared to if you're in a positive state of mind. Let's go hunt for clues. And while we wait, enjoy the view. So, it's supposed to be here somewhere, right? Oh, I think that's it. Do you see it? Under the legs of this man. Wow. 
That's it. Clue number eight. Interview your friends and family members. So my advice is quite simple. I just recommend everyone to go out and ask their friends and family members about their personal type. Not about your personal type, but their personal type. How do they see these matters? How do they think about these things? In what ways do they identify with introversion and extroversion? In what ways do they identify with intuition and sensing? Explore and learn how they think and how they see the world. Because if you can learn about how other people think about the world, you can much more easily understand how you see the world. Compared to them, do you tend to be more extroverted or introverted or more intuitive or more sensory? To some extent, while we can determine our personal type by just personally reflecting and thinking about our own preferences, you can't just determine your personality by asking yourself questions about the world and how you see things. You have to actually go out and test and see how those opinions and how those beliefs compared to the beliefs of other people. To some extent, we build our personality not just by going inside and self-reflecting, but also through interacting with the outside world and asking other people questions and learning about how other people see the world. So sit down with your friends and have them take the personality test. Or just ask them probing questions about the different personality traits to get them to think about and reflect and learn and share things that are important to them. The benefit of this exercise is also that it helps you get a little bit closer to other people. Hey, I think I already found it. I just took the Tellerific up to Montjuic and look, I think it's there. It must be. Is it? Oh yeah, there it is, there it is. Draw your dream life. The truth is, you might have a job, you might have expectations on you, you might have people that want you to fill a certain role, but the question is, who do you want to be? What would your ideal life look like? And how would your ideal day, life look, uh, day look like? Most people have a wide range of different personas that they switch between from situation to situation. But to find out who you really are, you should best study who you are when you're by yourself or around people that you feel a close and strong connection to. People that you feel allow you to be who you are. The best way to find yourself is not just to explore a private situation though, but to also look at yourself when you're engaged with a hobby or a passion that you're interested in. Because you do need something that engages you, something that captures your attention, something that wakes up your brain and shows you that, hey, this is interesting. I want to pay attention to this just because I find it interesting. Not because of any specific purpose, not because other people told me to, but just because I found it interesting. El Castillo de Montjuic. Hmm. My God, what a marvelous view. So we made it all the way up to the top. Castel Montjuic. <laughs> Montjuic. So we made it all the way up to the top. Castel Montjuic. And I believe this is also the place of the last clue. And I've looked in every single tower except that one over there. So let's see if we can find it. Okay, okay, it was right here. Fantastic. What is the last piece of advice? <laughs> Go live your life. And yeah, that's basically it. You don't find your personality type by just looking at shadows on the wall. You actually have to go out and do things. Personality is not just a thinking word, but it's also a doing word, which means that if you're an introvert, you're gonna have to find ways to express your introverted self in talking to friends and in going out and in relationships and at work. And if you're a judging type, you gotta showcase that and use that to your advantage in different life settings. And you gotta try it out. Personality is, to some extent, then ongoing experiment which means that you got to keep trying new things and see how that makes you feel so go between going out and talking to people and going inside and reflecting on your experiences and how you felt talking to people and doing that it's a beautiful world out there 
being individuated means being yourself in everything that you do, in every situation you're in, in every person you're with. And so when you found yourself, <laughs> there is a yearning to apply and experience and use that and show that in everything that you do. When you know who you are and you feel that you know who you are and you hear your own inner voice and you know your feelings, you want to speak out and you want to do something with those things. When you're alive, you want to live, right? <laughs> At least that's my point of view. How do you feel about the subject? And did this video help you find yourself? And did you enjoy being in Barcelona with me? on this little adventure. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and this trip with me through Barcelona. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.